we're back here at the NRA National Farms Museum with Phil Schreier, Senior Curator. Phil, we're calling this series. It's over the holidays. Things are a little looser. We're getting a little kind of in the holiday spirit. So we've broken out instead of Santa's bag of present. Phil's grab bags of cool things here at the museum to show off for Curator's Corner. So you have quite an interesting long rifle there, and I'm emphasis on long rifle. Tell us what we have this week. Well, John, this is a, uh, a very famous rifle from uh, World War I. Uh, it's called a, uh, a Model 1878 Beaumont. Okay. Now, I know already some of the uh, listeners and a, a few of the viewers at home, and I'm thinking, oh, not you, it, yeah, him. <laughs> oh, him, yeah. He, he already looks at this. He said, no way. <laughs> he says Phil's messed up in the head. An 1878 Beaumont. It's got a gigantic magazine that extends, and it wasn't used in World War I. However, this gun has a backstory. Uh-oh. The I love the backstory. The backstory, back yeah. Um, neat backstory about this gun. Fast forward to 1991. The director, Richard Attenborough, famous actor and director, uh, is going to uh, cast a movie, a uh, biopic on Charlie Chaplin. Okay. He picks Robert Downey Jr. Right. Uh, to uh, portray the, uh, the lead role in the did, film. Did a good job portraying him. Did a good job portraying him. Uh, throughout the film, he stages little recreations of events in, in Chaplin's life. And in 1918, Chaplin filmed a movie called Shoulder Arms. It was about World War I. It was very controversial at the time because they didn't think uh, a comedy about World mm. War I during World War I was particularly appropriate. It was a particularly grisly war. you got to remember people like to laugh when they're down. Mm -hmm. And uh, even so... Uh, Chaplin, hilarious in this right. World War I epic. And uh, as it turns out, the Germans uh, were all armed with uh, a rather unique rifle. So uh, one of my buddies at Stembridge Movie Rentals called my other friend Gary James over at Guns and Ammo at the time and says, Gary, Attenborough wants the same guns used in the film in 91 that were used in 1918. Wow. The Germans had these bizarre looking <laughs> guns. What were they? And Gary says, oh, of course, they were Beaumonts, 1878 Beaumonts. Well, Gary literally knows everything there is to know about firearms and movies and firearms in movies <laughs> specifically. So uh, he says, where am I going to find 15, 20 Beaumonts? Gary says, well, I think you've got some in the back corner over there in Glendale. You know, just go look. Sure enough, he finds, finds the guns, dusts them off, pulls the index cards on the guns, Finds out the last time they had been rented in 1918 oh, for Charlie Chaplin's oh, movie, wow. Shoulder Arms. Oh, jeez. So this, not the same type of firearm, the, the same the firearm. The same gun, and they hadn't been rented since. So uh, here we go. At the, uh, we recently uh, <laughs> received in the Hollywood Gun Collection a, uh, a gun that's marked Lasky Company. Okay. For famous Lasky players, right? Uh, uh, both on the barrel and the receiver, Jeez. and this is uh, obviously the, you can see how the uh, the magazine has been cut out and replaced with a wood plug, and uh, this is a 1914 U.S. Army Kersling, most popularly used on trench shotguns and Tommy guns. Wow! Uh, so it shows you a little bit of everything in Hollywood. That's truly a Hollywood gun. It's been all sorts of gussied up for the role it was playing. It does, and we've got you know some graphics uh, uh, to show the different uh, scenes from both the 1918 and the 1992 film. Wow. Uh, so this is, uh, this is Charlie, one of Charlie Chaplin's uh, uh, protagonists' rifles uh, from the uh, silent era all the way to the uh, modern. Jeez, which makes that movie about him even better. It's, uh, you're talking about authentic. Absolutely. You can't get much more authentic than that. Wow, so... So you got to get out here to the Farms Museum to see this. This is quite a rifle just to look at physically, but uh, as you said, the backstory is is even better. Backstory is a lot of fun on this. Great. Gun. How can we see these, Phil? Well, you can visit them at the uh, National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, that's open seven days a week, uh, nine thirty to five. Uh, free parking, free admission. Uh, you can visit us uh, at the. Uh, National Sporting Arms Museum. We have a number of Hollywood guns there as well. Mm -hmm. And that's at the Bass Pro uh, Center uh, headquarters shop in Springfield, Missouri. And if you can't visit us off the interstate, visit us on the internet at nramuseum.com. 
Right. It's the holiday season. A lot of people traveling. So if you get out of your D.C. area or to the Ozarks there, Springfield, both the premier. Well, this is the premier premier, the big, the big dog here in Fairfax. But no slouch either out in Springfield. So please get to see these museums if you can. If not, for sure, check out these fine firearms online. Thank you, Phil. I, I love Phil's grab bag so far. I can't wait. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. <laughs> I want to be here next Monday. We'll find out what's next week on the Curator's Corner. Thank, thanks, thank you, sir. John.